it's not so nice out, but I want to show you how I change a tire. There we go. I'll jump out in the rain. So I like to take a torque multiplier and a short handled shovel and a jack and some blocks with me whenever I am traveling in a bus. This is not my bus. I didn't set this up, but it uh, is a customer's bus. They had a low tire and sitting here in the parking lot, it went flat. So this is a good opportunity for me to show you how I change a tire while out in the road. I think it's important to be self-sufficient and if you've got just a few basic tools, you can change your tire, take one from the back, put it on the front if you need, and at least uh, get somewhere where you can get service done. So I got the torque multiplier. If you get the one with like four sockets, it's about 75 or 80 bucks. This one with all the sockets is about 100, some blocks, a jack, and a shovel. You can get all this for well under 200 bucks and be self-sufficient while you're out in the road. It kind of sucks out here right now. It's cold and rainy. We're supposed to get snow tonight, but I wanted to videotape this. Might help somebody out. Now you'll notice I was underneath here, but I was under it when the tire was all the way down. Don't ever put yourself in a position where if that jack fails or slips, you're going to get crushed. So uh, you'll probably have to do progressive jacking, jack it up a bit to the extent of your jack, put a block under something, lower it down, jack it up again. But when you do that, make sure that if that were to come all the way back down to the ground where you started, you're in a place where you are safe. So I've jacked it up a little bit. I'm going to loosen the lug nuts now, uh, just while the tire's prevented from rolling. Make sure that you either have the parking brake on in the back or chop the wheels or something so that, you know, if you're underneath the bus and doing this, it can't roll and hurt you. This is a torque multiplier. And when I was working in wind energy, I actually used a different version of this. When you're up on a wind turbine tower, you know, maybe hanging off on a, uh, a lanyard or something, uh, or your harness, you can't get a lot of force on things. So we would have to undo these bolts. Uh, they were like 700 foot pounds. And even hanging on them, I just, I couldn't do it. So a torque multiplier, uh, 
basically is it's got gears in it and I think this takes like 64 turns of this end to turn this side one revolution so you're getting leverage advantage there we had little torque multipliers with a handle I could put inside on the alternator bolts and the wind turbine but this is a different version of it and it just works really well So for example, if I were just to put this on here, I've had bolts, nuts, lug nuts that, you know, even with a three foot cheater bar, uh, I've had some with a six foot pipe on there and they were just tight and hard to get off. But with this, putting the foot up against something, so like another nut, that side so I'm rotating this and it's turning the nut that way same direction as a handle and this foot here is braced against this lug nut there so by turning this now that's still tight around somebody over tightened these but I can break that loose and it is turning, so I'm turning the handle, and this lug nut here is turning. So I just loosen that up, go around, loosen these all a little bit. That was way tight though. Wow. Would have had a heck of a time doing that out on the road with just a pipe. So anyway, yeah, I've turned it a bunch of times till you get that foot up against something. Be a little careful. <laughs> I have whacked myself in the face. Sorry about the train. I've whacked myself in the face. There's nothing holding this on the end. And so be a little careful because it could, see it's a little springy right now and it could slip off and I whacked myself in the head with this once, maybe twice. <laughs> So it still takes some effort, but man, if it's taking that much effort, that means these are super tight. I would love to put an actual torque wrench on these and see, see how tight they are. So the customer just had new new tires put on and yeah, I'm breathing hard. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Uh, I don't know if I could have gotten these off with a, you know, a regular wrench. changed a lot of tires out on the road and it's always a little bit of work. But it's nice to know that you can do it, especially if you're out boondocking or something. 
I'm a big fan of redundant system design, you know, multiple inverters, a small one and a large one. too tight. Now, these are tight and it's a lot of work. But if you're ever doing this and you just absolutely can't get them, check, make sure you're turning it the right way. On the left-hand side of a lot of buses, there'll be an L in the middle stamped in the stud, and that tells you it's a left-hand thread. So you actually would turn it right <laughs> clockwise to loosen it if you're on the left-hand or driver's side of the bus. So righty-tighty, lefty-loosey doesn't work on those. And I've had people call me up and they're fighting with it and they're fighting with it and they can't get them off. There are some ball joint ends or tie rod ends that are like that as well. And uh, so just verify the thread direction. <laughs> it's a little bit springy. These things, you know, don't have the best tolerances in the world and they feel a little sloppy, but they work. I've had this one for, I don't know, probably six years. I've changed 20 or 30 tires with it out on the road. And it's still working. Pretty good investment for 80 bucks. I'm doing this real time so you can see how long it would take you. I mentioned that these are way too tight. Did I get this one already? Yeah. All right. Once you get to that point, you take the socket off and it comes with this little extension. So you can just use the handle and loosen them up. All right, I'm gonna finish jacking it up, get this clear and I'll show you why I have a shovel.
So I reached the limit of the, the jack extension, so I put it on blocks, got the jack out of there. Now I will screw this up, push this back down in there, and then jack it up some more. Always staying clear of any potential fall hazard. Did I mention uh, to never get in the way of any potential crush zone? The jack is only for lifting. Always think that that jack could fail. It could slip, a seal could blow, something could happen, and it collapses. So just make sure if you're ever working underneath a bus that you have it blocked up on stands or cribbing blocks. Well, it got a little dark, so I start up uh, Victoria, the old farm truck. I gotta jack this up one more block high. So let me crawl into there and do that. Well, I hope you can see this, it's getting dark, but you're probably asking, what's the shovel for? Well, the shovel has two purposes. One, if you have to dig a little hole to put the jack in, it works great, but I'm always doing this myself. And how do you lift the tire up? If you get the jack adjusted right so that the studs are a little bit higher than the tire and you can get the tire up in position, I find that a short handle shovel just works really well as leverage so I can pick up here and take the weight off with the shovel and I can even you know put my foot on it and raise the tire up enough to get it on the studs or off the studs and there you go and then and then putting the new tire on or taking a tire off the back, it's just a reverse. Get it up in position, use that shovel underneath it as a little bit of leverage, and you can get it up under the studs one-handed, well, not one-handed, but one person, and uh, it's manageable. So anyway, I hope that helps. Be self-sufficient, be safe, safe travels. Thanks for being here, and I appreciate your support.